welcome to the wonderful world of dodgy movies and TV. I am your host, movie and TV mistress. And yes, I'm strangely getting nerdier each week. Anyway, this week I'm reviewing a 1985 sci-fi film called My Science Project. Let's watch the trailer, shall we? In 1955, an extraordinary object landed on Earth. Has the uh, press gotten wind of this ship? We don't think so, sir. If this got out, it could change the course of civilization. Or briefly. Well, they pulled the engine out. Get rid of it. In 1985, seniors at Kit Carson High... Hey, school tax, jellyfish. Come on, come on, come on. ...were working on their science projects when Mike Harmon discovered the engine. I wonder what this thing runs on. Unlet it. He fixed it. Unless your project is Dino Supreme, you both get D's. Hey, I'll take it. And he called it My Science Project. But he didn't turn it in. He turned it loose. I've seen lights like this at Ozzy Osbourne concert. This is bigger than the planet. Is this like when you told us we could smoke banana peels? <laughs> Uh oh. It's dangerous. You could wind up in another dimension. Something tells me we ain't in Kansas no more, photo. What's your What's he saying? He's going to kick the heart. What are we gonna do? About one to five of good behavior. Take the blow up. Science Project. Now that was a ride! Okay, so... Came out the same year as Back to the Future. Has some special effects that make reference to dinosaurs. And Dennis Hopper. It has Fisher Stevens in it. This is not Super Mario Brothers! But there's so many connections. <laughs> My Science Project, let's see. The movie is a kind of classic in that it's one of those 80s movies that you either saw or you didn't. And I'm one of the children that didn't see this movie as a kid. I've only just recently discovered it. And I have to say, it's not as bad as it appears, but it's not great. As I said, you've got Fisher Stevens, you've got John Stockwell, who you might remember from a movie with a car called Christine, because they even make reference to it with this line. You know, I've seen this movie where this haunted car flames guys out. Fisher Stevens, throughout this movie, makes meta references to other films, TV shows, music, and I'm. They even make a, a, a vague reference to Dennis Hopper's past, even with the end of the movie. If you didn't see it coming, with his van and his hippie necklace, then you're completely blind. <gasps> but then again, I am kind of completely blind without these on. We won't go! No, no, we won't go! Chicago! <laughs> Mr. Roberts? Bob? Flower power children, Beatle concerts, anti-war rallies. I'll be dipped in shit. What happened to you? I was blasting through the warp on a time tour of the 60s. I don't know what even to say, man. Like, I mean, trip and trip, man. It was. <laughs> What's your name, cowboy? Robert Roberts Esquire to you, honky. Is that a fact? Well, Miss Esquire, where the hell have you been? Woodstock. Boinker. Woodstock. Woodstock? What's Woodstock? OK, Captain Kirk. Well, it's not Boston Pops. Uh, you got an E in your science project, Michael. I do? On one condition. What? Get rid of the gizmo. Yeah, right the world is not ready for space and time. Up, right. It's only for such rare individuals as myself. And the future is a groove, man! I made sure of that. It's a funky valley eye! <laughs> oh, yeah! Hey, easy on the fringe, Kojak! John Stockwell is our lead. And he's called Michael. And the nerdy girl fancies him instead of the nerdy boy who ends up being in Carnosaur, the same year that Jurassic Park comes out. 
So we have your classic 80s nerds in that they have glasses, they have braces, and they probably have sellotape, which the boy does. Put a band-aid around the glasses, you know, and, and talks like that. And <laughs> Drives me fecking nuts that people portray nerds as that. That is not nerds. That's... I don't know what that is. That's not nerds. That's a stereotype. And it's really mean. And I don't like it. I do not talk like that. I don't think. Anyway, this movie, as I said, came out in 85. It came out after Ghostbusters, it came out after Back to the Future, or around the same time as Back to the Future. And of course people are going to claim it has similarities to both. It starts off in 1955, with something that crash lands in 1955, and they take the engine out. That trailer, if you did, had seen Back to the Future, you would probably think that what you were watching were deleted scenes from Back to the Future at the start. But no, we have Eisenhower, played by, I guess, the only actor in the 80s that played Eisenhower, because that's all his credits. When I looked them up, he did four movies, he played the same character, Eisenhower. All right. You've got Fisher Stevens, playing Salminio? Oh, okay. yeah. For years, I have to admit, for years, I honestly did believe that Fisher Stevens was Indian. I grew up watching Short Circuit, and he did such a good job, I honestly believed that he was Indian. Until I found out when I was older, when I was watching Early Edition, oh, no, no, he's a white Jewish guy. Okay. Well done for him being great at portraying an Indian. No, it's probably slightly racist now, but hey, he did a better job than Mickey Rooney playing a Chinese man. So Fisher Stevens is basically playing a greaser type kid. So is John Stockwell, they like their cars, and that's it. I have to say, the other thing that makes me laugh about 80s films now, and when I compare them to even 90s kids or teenage films, teenagers in the 80s looked like 30 year olds. Even in 21 Jump Street, and I know they're meant to be 21, but still, they didn't look 21, they looked a lot older. Maybe Johnny Depp could get away with it. I don't know. I just find that funny. In my head, when I'm watching this movie, I know they're meant to be like 18, maybe 17 or 18, but they look 30. And if it was a college or a university that we're at, and you were saying that instead, no college or university makes people do science projects that they put on display. Only high schools do that. So this is a high school film, and everyone's been held back since the 70s. Sure. Michael decides to take the nerdy girl with him after she asks him to help her not be the spinster of the class to a old army junkyard where, wouldn't you know it, he comes across the alien spaceship engine that Eisenhower said get rid of. And then he cleans it up and, wouldn't you know, he dusts it off, cleans it up, makes it look brand new like American Restoration. And it works, just like American Restoration does with his stuff. And, well, when you connect it to the electricity supply, strange stuff starts to happen. Now, at the start of the movie, what happens is a random Greek vase appears, or possibly Roman, but I think it was Greek. Vase appears. Fine. No harm, no foul, nothing dangerous. Next time they do that... Nothing happens except Dennis Hopper gets on an LSD trip and disappears, leaving behind his peace necklace. Sure. But nothing violent happens. Nothing scary comes out, apart from a vase, and Dennis Hopper disappearing. The third time it gets connected by the stupid nerd bloke from Carnosaur, who is now Jiminy Cricket in Once Upon a Time, all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose, and we have dinosaurs, and Nazis, and ninjas, and Neanderthal man attacking them. And they, before they even walk into the school where this is all happening, Fisher Stevens says, I'm not going in there without a gun and dynamite. Sure, how did you know that you were going to need that? So I feel like there's parts missing where you get to see the build-up of the crazy stuff that's going to come out because I feel like that was missing because it just sort of 
a mm, little bit, uh, disappear and nothing comes back. Uh, so that's my little problem in Digger the Film. The other thing about this movie is that it is written and directed by Jonathan R. Bethel or Bethel. He also wrote um, a really good sci-fi movie of the 80s that I love that is also kind of a niche. That would be The Last Starfighter starring Lance Guest. So I know he can write good sci-fi. Okay that one's clearly ripping off Star Wars but it has references to Back to the Future 2 in that as well because the car that they go off into space looks like a DeLorean. Maybe he just really loves Back to the Future and he was like ahead of his time. I don't know. Anyway, the other thing that he wrote and direct did was a movie that I do plan on watching at some point because I've never seen it and it disturbs me that he wrote and directed this. Theodore Rex, starring Whoopi Goldberg as a cop, teamed with a T-Rex. Because that needed to happen. Was there something about the early 90s and dinosaurs that I'm missing? I mean, I do remember Jurassic Park and I remember Super Mario Brothers, but... Did they, all of a sudden, did everyone sort of go, yeah, let's let's make dinosaurs a thing and let's make them talk? Okay, there was a lot of cartoons that I watched in the early 90s, late 80s. Uh, darn it. Denver. The Lost Dinosaur is one. Then there's Barney. Oh, God. See, I told you last week, the 90s are coming back in a bad way and I'm scared. Because we've already got Jurassic World, which is repeating all the Jurassic Park movies, basically calling them Jurassic World, but they're the same movies. If you watch them, the plot is exactly the same as the original trilogy. A bit like Star Wars, really. Back to this movie. The best thing about it has to be Dennis Hopper, who is not in it enough. But when he does do his crazy stuff, and it is before Blue Velvet, and it's... It's just him being a crazy hippie guy. I swear he probably was stoned when he did this, and maybe he was stoned when he did... Super Mario Brothers, who knows? But at least he knows how to walk like a T-Rex. Um, that's a reference to Mario Brothers if you pay attention to how he walks and moves his little hands. Dennis Hopper does a great job in this film. John Stockwell, Michael's dad, is pointless and adds nothing to the plot. It felt weird and when you come back you're not sure if what's going on with his dad and his stepmom who marries his dad in one day of dating him if that's like a timeline thing there's a time warp there's a space warp i part of me was thinking is the engine possibly from the tardis because apparently it does everything at least the special effects were good the dinosaur wasn't bad and Jet fisher stevens nearly dies from a dinosaur attack but it feels like it's missing parts, probably because it got cut down by the studio or something. But the movie's actually a good film. It just wasn't a hit. Um, so apart from my minor dig about the plot points and plot holes, um, I don't quite know how to sort of explain that this film is fun. It, it is fun, but it's fun as an, an 80s kid looking back at it and realising, oh, that's what all those references are. John Stockwell doesn't do a bad job of being the leading man, but then again he didn't do a bad job in Christina either of being the jock. Um, and he's kind of playing a similar character, but he really loves his car. And it's a red car. This movie was trying to be too many things at once. It came out in a year that we had loads of sci-fi films and this just got kind of lost. It, it's a bit like if you didn't see Fast Times at Ridgemont High when it first came out, you probably saw it later. This one was probably a, a DVD rental type movie that you'd rent because you were, you know, all the other good films were out and you went, oh, okay, my science project, I'll rent that. But if anything, watch it for a very young Fisher Stevens before he became the Indian in Short Circuit. And watch it for Dennis Hopper just doing an LSD trip with some weird effects. And please, can somebody explain to me how 
how a science teacher doesn't recognize that that's the globe thing that's in every sci-fi film going back to even the 50s where you touch it and the electric follows your finger around the glass ball it's in everything that's not fucking alien the metal might have been but that's not anyway that's my thoughts on my science project and i would say eh, give it a try it's not the worst movie in the world it's not the best but if you want to watch a good 85 movie back to the future <laughs> that's my choice also if you also want to watch a good movie about a science project i would also recommend see you yesterday which has a cameo as a science teacher of michael j fox hey i'm bringing it full circle here give me a break so next week i will be reviewing another sci-fi film for this month of november and it might be 80s related it might not i haven't quite decided yet but until next week folks remember to hit that subscribe button and when you hit that, there'll be a notification bell over here. So hit that notification bell and that will notify you when I upload. Comment, share and subscribe. And when you comment or if you want to, throw out ideas. Because you know what I also want to do right now? I want to get ready for Christmas. And I want to have suggestions of what I should review at Christmas. Should it be Christmas horror movies, action Christmas movies, family Christmas movies? Or movies that you might have seen at Christmas when you were growing up, like, I don't know, Jaws, or the Carry On movies, or Bond movies, or the Back to the Future movies, which seem to be on every Christmas, Easter, every public holiday. I'm just saying. So, throw me ideas of what you would like me to review. Could be anything, and I will see what I can do in December. So, for December, People's choice. <laughs> and I will do what I, what I can for you. Um, so thanks for watching. And remember, there's a lot of dodgy movies out there. Bye.